Hello everybody, this is Hussein from EffectsCo. Recently, while I was doing my webinar, I came across a participant who was asking me about how we composite two images together. So I find this is a good opportunity to showcase this in uh, as a one of tutorial. So here we have two images which are basically separate images. And I've done this in advance but I will start again from scratch. We have two separate images. I got this from Unsplash. Okay, I found this image in Unsplash. So I selected and removed her out of this background and brought her into this scene. Okay, and as you can see the background and the foreground does not match. So in compositing usually what we do is we composite or we color match the foreground to the background not the other way around. So if you can see in my layers panel here, we have her standing in the middle of the alleyway. And what I did was uh, introduce a level adjustment layer to change her color to suit the uh, background. And I also use a black and white image to check on the luminosity while I was doing my color grading. So let's start from scratch. I'll show you how I did it to composite this image. So I'm going to go and open up the background on its own. So I use this image here, brand new layer, and I'm going to place the character into here. I'm going to go to File and Place Embedded, and I'm going to look for Girl 2 PSD in this case, and she seems a bit too large for this image. So Usually by eye, we can figure out how big of a person should be in the image. This is quite small, make it a bit larger. And I'm trying to hide the feet underneath. If not, we'll be taking a lot more time to put the shadows and all under the feet. So I'm just going to do a bit of a trick there. So I think she's just nice now to be in the middle of the image. I'm going to do a check mark up here to accept. And she came in as what we call a smart object over here. So the first thing we do is we are going to use levels to adjust her so she meets the background. And I'm going to show you a trick on how to do this uh, quickly. So I'm going to go down to my adjustment layer and bring up levels. And if I were to adjust anything now, everything will be affected. So that's not what we want. So what we want is just to adjust the character in front here. So I'm going to hit this clipping mask or clip layer clipping button over here. Okay, so now only affects that person itself. Okay, so I'll do a reset there. Okay, so to make this happen, I'm going to use what we call by eye kind of adjustment. And you can clearly see that the jacket is too bright compared to the background, right? So normally what we are trying to match is we match the, the shadows and the highlights of the background to match the one in the front. To help us with that, I'm going to bring in an adjustment layer called black and white. And it's going to go right on top. Everything will be turned into black and white. So it's much easier to see now the luminosity between the foreground and the background. You see there's some darks over there. Should be matching her pants and some highlights which are matching her whites here. So we are not going to use this property here, but we're going to close it down. And I'm going to bring back the property for level adjustment. And we are going to go channel by channel. So if you see here now, we are in RGB mode, right? Which is going to affect the whole thing, which we don't want. All right, so I'm going to go channel by channel and you know RGB is made out of three channels which is red, green and blue. So let's go into red first and try and adjust the red channel so it matches the other part as well. So I'm just going to use the middle slider which is the gamma slider by eye adjusting the image so it matches the background. Yeah. So I'm going to push it a bit more to the right after which I'm going to jump to the green. I think the red was too much so I'm going to bring it back a bit. Okay, that's about right. Let's go to green. Let's go green. Uh, that's nice. And then let's go to blue. And let's match the blue to the background as well. So we'll try our best to match the luminosity from the background to the uh, foreground. And then we'll jump back to our RGB and disable the layer, the black and white layer, see what happens. So we can see now we have done, we are probably almost halfway. And we can go back into the red channel and adjust it a bit more. And then we'll jump to the green channel. Okay, and I'm going to jump into the blue channel. So you have to go back and forth until you get something that matches the background. I'm going to go back to the red channel. 
let's put a bit more red in there because uh, the, the background has a lot of red in it and I'm going to maybe take out a bit of more red because she has a bit of a more flesh tone on her and I'm going to go to the blue just that right she seems now more as if she in this in the scene so I'm going to switch off before and after so we're quite close the other thing about compositing that you need to understand is that if I were to zoom in now you can see that she has a very sharp edge around here and a little bit of fringing going around her as well so let's look at it especially here so it looks at, as if she's not part of the scene and she has a bit of fringing so what we can do is we can put in a filter for her we already have her as a smart object which is good because we are going to introduce some filters which we're going to do a non-destructive way of adjustment a mask for her first yeah that then we will apply that filter to the mask so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my command or control key and click on the thumbnail so we get a selection of her and I'm going to convert or I'm going to make this into a mask okay so I'm going to click on the mask area here we have a mask you can see the mask by clicking on the alt option key we have a mask so what I'm going to do is I'm going to smoothen the mask a bit using a filter make sure that we have selected the, the mask not the image yeah not the RGB image zoom in to see the effect okay right now you can see it's a bit sharp so I'm going to go maybe you make sure you have selected the mask go to filter other and we use minimum and you can see what's happening there before and after right before and after so that takes out a bit of the fringe so I'm going to probably need to put about 0.5 so let's see that yeah before and after so that takes a bit about the uh, sharpness of the edge a bit around and press ok what we can do next is actually uh, perhaps we can put in some uh, depth of field for the background the background seems too sharp at the moment so I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to introduce blur to the back okay I'm going to do a bit of blur so what we're going to do is we're going to select the background image I'm going to unlock that and I'm going to convert this into a smart object right click and convert smart object it's, it's good that to use smart objects when you're introducing filters because once you have the filters enabled you can then adjust uh, the filters over and over and over again after you converted that into a filter I'm going to rename that into this background and I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to say blur a Gaussian blur turn a bit of a blur at the back okay so we can open up the layer here we have a Gaussian blur about eight or maybe less it's a bit of blur to make a stand out a bit maybe five for now and press ok all right and you can see now that you have a what we call a mask here obviously we don't want everything here to be blur or maybe just the area at the back so I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my mask and I'm going to go and grab my brush and with a, a black brush I'm going to just take out that blur which is in front by using a masking tool so you can see my mask here All right we have that and if you want to increase the the blurness of the background you just have to click on this Gaussian blur name of it and you can back okay let me make it to 10 and see what happens okay now we have more blur and you can see the blur is actually only at the back okay you can revisit this and you can change it if we have painted that just now with black now we can paint with white okay I'm just going to reverse that with my brush I'm going to remove the back so maybe more blur here okay you can keep on changing that you can bring it back or you can just swap the colors again maybe just front part is blur you can see the mask there so that's it it's the important thing that you for you to know is you have to match the foreground to the background so we can see here that we see a, yeah, a before and bring that uh, person in or the character in just in using levels if you want you use black and white to to match the luminosity but we don't need that anymore after this so I hope you have learned something hope you subscribe to the channel for more interesting stuff like this we're probably bringing you more uh, tips and tricks and techniques using the Adobe Suite
All right. Thank you very much.